Okay, we read out of the law, and now we'll go in to the class. Now, this particular class will be going on, will, will actually be going on a, a different level than than what we've been dealing with in the past as far as uh, the understanding of the powers that operate over us. Uh, many years ago, I remember standing on the streets with signs showing the mark of the beast, uh, the RFID chip, showing the satellites positioned in different areas that they were looking to mark the people uh, as far as FEMA is concerned, their hand in processing the people through disasters. But yet, to some degree out there, I know those that follow us are in the know to understand what the Bible says concerning these things, but for those that don't believe the Bible or can't tie these things in because they never related them to the Bible, we'll, we'll be able to do so after this class. Keep in mind that the only way that this can be explained to resolve everything we see, especially amongst not just those that believe in the Bible, but the so-called conspiracy community, the only way to resolve and to understand what's really going on in the earth is through the Bible. Now, what led me to this to some degree, I wanted to go into tying in what they call the Illuminati or what the masonry and all that. And I was looking to say, well, okay, how can we tie this into who's really controlling those in power? Who are they? You notice that when I notice that when I see people uh, exposing what's going on in the earth, there's this ambiguous they. That, that's usually thrown out there. Well, they are trying to do this to us. They are trying to do that to us. Or they are planning this and they are planning that. But you can never get a detailed understanding or name to the term or to the stigma or the word they. It's, it's so ambiguous. And you're gonna find out brothers and sisters that's on purpose. Uh, what drove me to go into some of this is uh, today is because I seen uh, a video it, it, and it was linking it into what I was going to talk about. I seen a video where this uh, th this this guy from the Bible Belt, a white guy, a white Baptist in the United States, who found his grandfather's oath. Uh, that he made within masonry, Freemasonry. And what he did so that people can't say that this is a conspiracy whatever or whatever, he filmed it live. He cracked open the chest and said, well, I'm going to see what's in this chest so that you can't, so no one can claim that I, that, that he took this off of uh, online or usually when you bring out certain things, people say, well, stay away from the internet. Well, this information could not have been in the inter on the internet in 1920 when his grandfather made this initiate into masonry or what you would call Freemasons. And when he read the oath, it, it, it really had me understand that when people say Illuminati, they really should be saying Freemasons. Number one thing that I've seen, uh, the guy was reading, and I, I have a lot of it here, and I got so much information, but I can't go through it all. But in a nutshell, this oath at the fourth de degree, once they, once they make it to the fourth degree, number one, they must acknowledge that Christ is just a prophet or the same level as Muhammad or whatever the case is. But the key thing is they, should, they have to also acknowledge the Virgin Mother Mary, and check this out. And this is what really got, got my wheels turning here. That they must acknowledge the Pope as the head Mason and the incarnate of Christ on earth. So Masons 
are acknowledging the Pope's position, which we know as Antichrist, as the same position as Christ himself. They must honor him as if he's Christ in the earth. Also, there was all these other weird things that was going on within this oath that they're able to wipe out all races and to kill people's children and all these things. And you would have to see it yourself. All right. I favorited that particular uh, video on gathering one full force of it so that you can all see it. And one thing that's going to lead us into what I'm about to go into that links in a lot of things that we were teaching, even on the streets with the New World Order and all that. All right. That they that they speaking of the Freemasons. Worship the enlightened one. And they worship him from the from listen. Not from Earth, but from the outside of the Earth. So they are dealing with him on the outer firmament of the earth. And uh, when I seen this, that's what I favorited it first. And then that opened it up where I'm, I said, OK, we've already been going into them setting their nest among the stars. But usually when we go into the book of Obadiah, speaking of Esau or Edom setting his nest amongst the stars, it's usually relegate, relegated to just people in space travel going outside of the earth and setting up things. Well, brothers and sisters, it's deeper than that. The principalities and powers that are being worshipped, that they're going out there to worship, is Satan himself. He comes in and out of our realm. Not only him, but fallen angels. We're going to prove it today. Also, when Christ returns, the prophecy before he enters this earth is his war against them there. So when you look at what they call mythology and uh, when the Greeks and Romans were worshiping the gods and that they had to do cer certain sacrifices to the gods or the gods would cause disasters and all that. It's not a myth. It's the same exact thing in this <clears throat> earth today. Same exact, there's nothing different. It's, it is not a myth. Those gods are fallen angels. Now, what I did first, let's go to Ephesians 6 real quick. And I got a lot of information here, so bear with me. While I get this here. Now, you know what it says in Ephesians 6, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, blood, but principalities and powers. But what I did, for those who don't know, and you can do this yourself, the New Testament is translated out of the Greek, from the Greek text. So what I did was, I went into Ephesians and translated it from the English to give it its true meaning that was there in the Greek before the English. To show you that not only did Christ have this understanding of these powers that operate on the outside of our earth. Okay. Hey, sir. All right. Good. Paul had this understanding also. The disciples had this understanding. Read Ephesians 6. Uh, Con, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Read. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. So flesh and blood is what you and I have. So Paul said we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but what? But against Principalities against principalities against powers against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against the rulers of the darkness of this world. So against. there's rulers or gods over this world. See now usually when someone breaks this down, you would say, well, OK, this is people in high Masonic seats that are operating as what you would call pawns in Satan's game. That's just one level. 
But Paul was speaking of a different level here when you go into the Greek. Read. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of you don't even ask the question, what is the true mission for Freemasonry? What is their objective? Why are they setting up cornerstones and foundations all over the earth to bring forth a one world order? Whose order? Where did they get the plan from? Where did they get the blueprint? Who's directing them? Who's giving them their agenda? See, they have us distracted and focusing on just things on a political level or the entertainment level. When I say the they, these are they that are operating from the flesh and blood standpoint. But there's a higher they. When you go into the Greek, and I read this, this is the translation out of the Greek. This is what Paul wrote. For we are not wrestling between flesh and blood, but between a chief. Between wickedness positioned above the sky. Now, let me read this again. <laughs> That's an entirely different understanding when you look at it in the Greek than when we see it in the English. Not that the English is incorrect, but this is giving you a higher understanding based on what was there before the translation. And I can see to a certain degree why they don't want us to see it this way. For we are not wrestling between flesh and blood, but between a chief between wickedness positioned above the sky. The political governors of this earth are on an agenda or under an agenda. They're not coming up with rules themselves or laws themselves. All laws are leading to an agenda. So also when I was looking at this guy, uh, when he opened up this chest from 1920 from this mason who he was showing these different degrees, he also showed different plaques and all that that came from the masons. Different plaques showing where they were at each interval up until this point. The moon landing, you have the G with the compass. All these plaques he had show certain events that they were looking to bring forth in this earth. All right, so what I did I downloaded some of the things that I went, that I used to teach in the past as far as some of the information and the pictures and all that to resolve it to what we know today now. Because back then when I first understood the truth, when I understood that they were uh, positioning satellites to track everyone, at that time we were only looking on a terrenal level, like they just try to watch everything we do. They're looking to destroy us. They want to know where we are before we're in the wilderness and all those things are correct. But it's on higher levels than that with these Masonic administrations. And Christ is coming to battle against them first. When I say them, those that are, have positioned themselves above the sky to be gods and to lead mankind. Vera chip. Now it's a lot. Of, I got it. I, I got it here. I downloaded some things from certain institutions that I'll share with you today. But here it is. Dig digital angel in which they can look from the outside of the earth through satellites and attract not only pets and people but to hook everyone to a computer system right and to be controlled from the outside of this earth now this is a company that you can actually look up yourself called digital angel digital angel okay so you can see it, I'm gonna turn it this way. Digital 
angel. Right? Here's more. I actually got this from off of, off of a NASA site, information from 1998, Masons bringing this forth. Now, I'm going to show you how this resolved with scripture. I'm going through all these scriptures in a second, but I'm going to show you what I'm having, what I'm reading from. Burning the Cosmic Commons, Evolutionary Strategies for Interstellar Colonization. To show you that they have a plan to colonize on the outside of this earth. Okay? The powers that be have resources to get on the outside of this earth to worship Lucifer face to face. I got more. Now I'm, I'm going to show you this. We're going to go into this. So they, got, they, got, they have the people they're going to track on this earth. And they have those that are initiates who have been promised a greater place once earth is judged. These are what you would call Masons. Masons are not preparing to stay here. They're preparing to be with their God. And I'm going to go into that in a moment. And it links directly to the Verichip. Also, I downloaded this. I'm giving you the information first, brothers and sisters, so you can say that you can know that this is not a conspiracy. I didn't come up with this. This is information you actually research yourself. So I'm putting it out there for you. The Artemis Project. Artemis is an ancient Greek god. The Artemis Project. If you can see that. I downloaded this directly from NASA's <laughs> NASA's website. The same NASA that sends ships out into the sky, right? Now listen to what it says for the Artemis Project. Artemis Society International is the meeting ground for the Artemis Project. The Artemis Project is going to take you there. The project is a private venture to establish a permanent self-supporting community on the moon. Here you will find out how we're going to get there, how we are going to pay for it, and how you can too. So they're taking donations. Now, mind you, they're just telling you the moon based on that stuff they did in the 19, before the 1970s when they claimed that people landed on the moon. That's the, that's what they give into, that, that, that's the lie they're giving you. But it's, Far more sinister, but this is more proof that they have a plan to colonize on the outside of our earth. Colonize means the same way the British and the, the English and the French went to the Western world to colonize that, that they're looking to colonize and live on the outside of this earth. So what's going on? Why? Are they planning to live on the outside of the earth? What do they know is coming? What are they preparing for? What's wrong with earth? <laughs> okay, they understand prophecy. And they know that this earth as we know it today have limited time. Not, acc not according to, to what they're doing in raping the earth, just according to prophecies itself. I'm going to go there in a moment. Listen to this. Now, when you go to the links in this project, which I don't have time to go into, I wanted you to look at this. These people are planning, and a lot of them, through, through the Virgin uh, Airlines and all that, a lot of them are going out there now. Okay. And it, will, it would blow your mind if you seen exactly what they were really dealing with and who they were really dealing with, who they're dealing with out there. It's not what they're telling you. This guy right here, 
The Virgin Galactic appoints Richard DeBella as vice president of the business development and government affairs. This guy right here was appointed by Virgin. If you can see him. This guy right here have, has been appointed with Virgin Airlines. With Virgin Airlines, this guy right here. A, a top mason to set their nest amongst the stars, to make it a regular for those that can afford it to live on the outside of this plane, the outside of Earth. They have a whole article on this guy who's linked with NASA, also they're linked with DARPA. Now what's the ties to bond? Those that are over these corporations that are a part of this plan, when you do the research, are all Masons under one agenda. Masonry is not just a brotherhood. It's a religion, an initiate, an initiation, a doorway into worshiping Satan himself. You can move it back real quick if you don't mind, sir. We got real dark. <laughs> now, how do we resolve this according to scripture? Let's go to Isaiah the 14th chapter. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How did you fall, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now, mind you, now check this out. Uh, on radio shows and, and, uh, and through certain debates, when we speak to so-called Masons or who you would call another part of the Masonry, the Jewish powers, they claim that they view Satan or Lucifer different than we view him. That they have an entirely different view on him than the Bible story because they feel that the Bible demonizes their God. So they don't tell us right out that's our God. But they try to use some type of PR to make us believe that Lucifer or Satan have good qualities. That there's things that he have given mankind that we should appreciate. <clears throat> so this is whom they're, they're talking about, Lucifer. The all-seeing eye over your pyramid, right? The one they're trying to link, the one that the God that they have actually programmed the whole earth to receive, who have set up these cities all over the earth, who have, who have actually established these cities. You notice every place these cities are set up, the Masons set up a chief cornerstone and erect temples to their gods called churches. Satan have set up all these cities here, all over the earth. They're his cities. He's the God of this world. How art thou fallen, read it. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Son of the morning, because he used to be a morning star singing before the Most High, read. How art thou cut down to the ground? How did you get cut down to the ground? How did you fall, Lucifer? Which? Lucifer is the God of the Masons. Okay, straight out. You must be of one of the, 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 the three or four top religions in this earth to become a Muslim, which means, I mean, to become a Mason, which means you must believe in one of the mainstream religions to prove to you that all mainstream religions lead to the worships of Lucifer. Hence, all Christians that believe in Christ right now and is being prepared for Christmas right now, all right? to show you that it's really a pathway into a Luciferian doctrine when Christ have nothing to do with December the 25th. But if you have a belief, why? Because you cannot believe and worship Lucifer if you don't believe in the God who created him. You must know that God exists to be a Mason. Okay? Read. Well, verse 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend into heaven, read. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount. Hold, hold up, read that 
what Lucifer promised to do again. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend into heaven. So Lucifer promised when he was hurled from the beginning, when he was kicked out of the heavenly realm. See, there's levels to heaven. There's seven heavens. The top heaven, Lucifer have no access to. Okay? But the heavens is not just the seventh heaven where the most high is. There's levels. Lucifer can still reside in the outer firmament heavens. Okay. Read. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will exalt my what? My throne. My throne. Above the stars of God. He promised to set up a place where the stars of heaven are and above them. He promised that. That he will set up a place above the stars that the Most High have. So NASA is not telling us the truth. It's not about some guys just jumping on the moon and taking some, some steps on the moon here. This was an oath that their chief God that have given them all this technology in return that they, they would use this technology to help him accomplish his promise he made from the beginning. That he would have a place to rule this earth from space and be respected as the God of this world. Okay? From space. That he would have a place, a plane, set up on the outside of this earth. Now you notice, uh, for years we, we told people, listen, it's not what they're telling you. It's out there. That when it, they say planets, ignore that. It's speaking of stars. Okay. Hold that. Hold that because I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Genesis real quick. We're going to go right back to Isaiah. I'm going to show you something. Now, of course, tomorrow in the academy in creation, during creation, we're going to dove into this a little more. All right. For our academy tomorrow, we're going right into this. All right. But there's something deep when it comes to creation. Right. We're going to go there. I'm going to, going to, I'm going to touch on it just a little bit here. Top of the Allah Hayim, the righteous Allah Hayim, is the Most High Himself, Ahaya, the Holy Spirit, Rawak, and the first begotting of the Father, the first spirit whom would create the heavenly realm, Yeshaya Himself. That's what makes Christ the first begotten of the Father. So Christ is a, is, is a great power from the beginning, one of the first three, who created the heavenly realm. Lucifer was a product of this creation. And Lucifer helped create this realm. He helped create it under proper order until the revolt. I'm going to show you something here. He said, let us make man in our image, right? Let's show you who created Lucifer. Hold that and get Colossians 1 and 13. Colossians 1 and 13. Uh, the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Go ahead. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood. Christ. Even the forgiveness of sins. Even the forgiveness of sins, read. Who was the image of the invisible God. He's the image of the invisible God, speaking of Christ, read. The firstborn of every creature. That means out of all creation, Christ was made first. All right? So that's proven to you right there that Christ himself is a product of creation. Who created him? The Father. 
and the Holy Spirit. He's a product of creation. Read. 16. For by him were all things created. Go ahead. That are in heaven. That are in heaven. Read. And that are in earth. And that is on earth. So the heavens were created first. Now I'm going to, even though we're going to go into it tomorrow, I'm going to show you why. When we go into this tomorrow, we're going to actually show you why the so Okay. That's why it says visible or invisible. See? Read. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities. Or what? Or principalities. Or what? Or principalities. Or principalities, which are chiefs. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, against flesh and blood, but principalities. Read. Or powers. Or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So the principalities and powers were created by Christ in the beginning. Even, even the principalities and powers who revolted, who went against the Most High, who are the enemies of God. See that? Now let's go back to this principality or the chief of this earth. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14. Go ahead. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. So he promised to one day leave the realm that he was relegated to. That's Lucifer himself. And he will, he will do what? I will be like the most high. I will be like God. Hmm. I will be like God. Now, some of the examples we can give of the Most High is that he sends the eyes of the Lord within the earth and know what everyone is doing at all times. You see, Lucifer cannot, or, or their fallen angel who's Satan, cannot accomplish this unless he can have the same power the Most High have to know what everyone is doing at all times. Hence, like we showed you earlier, you're all seeing I on the outside of the earth that must be linked to his city. Technology that makes it simple to just touch and go. Okay, these are grids that were created to be ruled by Satan. Using unique biological Okay. And that's another reason why I'm, the only place that will be right when it all is said and done is the wilderness where no grid have been established in this earth. But the cities were set up by masons so that everyone that's living in those cities can be on a grid to worship the true God who've established that city. That's what the new world and all that is really about. Right? Now, finish reading what you have. Uh, verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Yet thou shalt be brought down to where? To hell. To where? To hell. To hell. Read. To the sides of the pit. To the sides of the pit. So this will happen upon the arrival of our Lord and Savior. All right. So he's not going to just come straight to the earth and destroy the war going to start out there with the colonies they have already established. Don't believe. Don't believe anything they're telling you concerning the rockets and things they have going up in space. OK, they have already accomplished this. They're living there. They have a, they have set up. I asked your pop before we started to go look up CERN because I didn't have a chance to do that having to go into this class. But CERN, where's, where's CERN set up at? C-E-R-N, where, where's it set up at, Shapat? It's, uh, it's in Europe. It's in Europe. What part of Europe? I, I think it's in Belgium. Yeah, like two or three countries across. Yeah, Belgium. 
I know it. it, it, it Switzerland as well. Switzerland. So it's this long thing, this great big magnet machine that they have, that they claim is to be utilized for antimatter when we know it's really a machine for, for, for what you would call portals, opening up windows. Okay? The, Europe or Rome has this. They have this particular tool. This is a physical machine called CERN. What do you got there on that, real quick, before I go into what I have to say here? Uh, yes. Okay, it says. Um, you can come over here. And you can say it here. Go ahead. This is from the register. Go ahead. In uh, 2009. Go it ahead. Says, Something may come through dimensional doors. Read it again. This is the title. It says, Something may come through dimensional doors at LHC, which is the Lar Large Hydrogen Collider. This is from one of the uh, leading so-called researchers and scientists who's the director at CERN. It says, uh, a top buffing at the Large Hydrogen Collider says that the Titanic machine may possibly create or discover previously in unimagined scientific phenomena or what they call unknown unknowns. For instance, an extra dimension. An extra dimension. Here's, Invisible, visible, go ahead. Here's a quote from Sergio Bertolucci, who is the director for research and scientific computing at CERN. Here's the quote, it says, out of this door might, some, might come something, or we might send something through it. Something may come out of it, or we may send something through it. So what's going on here? What's going on here? Doorways, or what the scriptures call gates. When you look at the word gates all through the Old Testament, a lot, of the, a lot of them, some of them are just regular gates you can just swing open to a door. And a lot of scriptures in Old Testament, I'm going to go over that very soon to show you that it's actually speaking of doorways that the angels take in and out of dimensions. So what they're trying to do, Lucifer is trying to mimic this by making the machines help them deal with interdimension travel throughout the earth. They used to use the pyramids for this. They used to use different places that they have established so that they didn't have to worry about traveling the time when it comes to travel, knowing that two spaces they can go between to cut time, like the angels. They have created these things. NASA have created these things. All right? Now, and the reason we're giving you real articles articles and scientific articles and things that can be proven so that people out there cannot claim that this is a conspiracy, we're making this up, or we're far-fetched. This is all connected to the Bible. So when Christ returns, he must take down the cities that they have established on the outside of this earth first. Let's go there. Let's go to Revelations. It talks about the stars fail. Let's get it. I think it's Revelation 6. Uh, Revelation 6, uh, verse, uh, Revelation 6, I'll start at verse 12. Go ahead. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. That's it. When he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. There was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. And the what? And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, read. Even as a fig tree cast of her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it, rolled, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved 
out of their places. Now I need you to read up where it says they fell into the into the earth like an untimely fig. Read that again. Uh, verse thirteen. And the stars of heaven fell, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Unto the earth. Now this is the sixth seal. Now we know that ba way back when, in the beginning, there was a fight in heaven. When Satan and one third of his angels were kicked out of the heavenly realm or the seventh heaven. This is the sixth seal now. What will happen, Read. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast of her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So it tells us that the stars of heaven will actually be what? destroyed from the outer firmament and crash into the earth, come back into the earth during judgment. There's more. Hold that and get Matthew 24. That links into the same thing here. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And what? And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Read that again. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. The sun shall be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. The moon shall not give her light. And what? And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And the stars shall what? And the powers and the stars shall fall from heaven. Shall fall from the outside of this earth. Read. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. It's speaking of the powers or the angels that are operating on the outside of our realm. That war will happen before the war on earth. So Christ is going to fight them first and take them down. Then take down all the people who was worshiping them. Next. And we know that to be what? Chiefly Rome. Chiefly the Gentile powers that are ruling this earth. They're preparing. Thank you. They're preparing a war. Against our Lord and Savior. Against Christ. But they have colonized. They're out there in space. I'm talking about their gods ruling the earth from there, coming back and forth into the earth. OK, they're also the leaders and gods over the top corporations all on this earth, all amongst this earth. They operate with them. Let's get the book of Obadiah real quick, and then I'm going to go into some of this material that I've actually hold, hold up before we go to Obadiah one more thing to prove to you it's speaking of Christ taking them down let's go back to Revelations real quick and get Amos 5 thank you Revelations chapter 6 Verse 13. Go ahead. And the stars of the heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast of her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now who's going to do this? Hold that and get Amos, the fifth chapter, the 18th verse. Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. The Bible says, woe unto you who desire the, the day of the Lord. Now, why does the Bible say woe or destruction to you who desire the day of the Lord? Because so many people out there are claiming they can't wait till Christ comes back. When you don't, when, when somebody who's coming back is not for your turn. The Christ that you are worshiping is not the Christ that's coming back. That's why it says, woe to you 
that desire the day of the Lord, try to say, I can't wait till Christ come back. Well, if you've been celebrating Christmas, another Christ is coming back and he's not going to be for your turn. If you've been going to church on Sundays, then you waiting for another Christ. Here's the question. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Read. So what end is it for you? That's the question. To what end is it for you? So woe to you that's desiring him to come and don't know who, who you're really dealing with. Read. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Read. As if a man did flee from a lion and, met a, and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on a wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even every, even very dark and no brightness in it. And very dark and no brightness in it. And that's speaking of that darkness that's prophesied in Matthew. That's that darkness when all the stars of heaven shall come tumbling to this earth. That's the coming of our Lord and Savior. So the fight began on the outside of this earth, brothers and sisters. There's levels of heaven on the outside of this earth. That, that that fallen angels are operating with, that Lucifer is operating. He promised that he would rule from the outside of our earth. That's the principalities and powers. That's the power that Paul was speaking of, that the disciples were contending against. Okay? Now they tried to physically, and they did to some degree, begin back in ancient Babel to build a temple that can actually go up into the sky and then they can spiritually link to the invisible realms to go back and forth out. That was the, in, the intent from the original Babylon. They have taken that technology on, the, on a way higher level and have accomplished what Nimrod and them could not do way back then. They have now done it. How do we know? Let's go to the book of Obadiah. I'm going to show you how this links to what's about to happen in our earth real time. How, do, how, how does this link real time to what's going on? I'm going to show you. Uh, Read. Obadiah verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord power. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God. Read. Concerning Edom. Concerning Edom. Edom. Now we know the Edomites is what? Jacob's brother. The first brother Esau that lost the birthright, which is the who is the father of the European powers, mainly the Jewish powers today. The British family today. The Romans today. Read. We the Germans today. Let me put that out there too. Read. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her and battle. Go ahead. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. So the Bible is saying not too long they were banished to the clefts of the rocks, but now their pride have deceived them. And to believe in, they can fight against the Most High when they were not too long living in the rocks. Not too long ago, you were living in the rocks. Now you're going to take over the world and build an army against the Most High himself? Read. Whose habitation is high. Whose habitation is what? Is high. Is high. So mind you, Satan could not accomplish this without a people. To operate under him and see and that's where your initiates of the masonry comes into play a secret society working among society to bring forth an agenda you're going to find that this is an ancient agenda from Esau or Edom who hid himself to operate amongst the population to lead everyone into a one world order under Lucifer read that saith in his heart, 
Who shall bring me down to the ground? Who shall bring me down to the what? Who shall bring me down to the ground? Now, guess what? It's not just Esau thinking this. This is the spirit of Satan who said that he would do what? He would ascend into heaven and be like the most high. Who's going to bring me down to the ground? How do we know it's Satan? Who's given Esau his plan to go out into space? Who's given Esau that understanding and technology? But we understand according to prophecy, who's going to bring him down to the ground and bind him, bound him hand and foot for a thousand years. It will be Christ. Who shall bring me down to the ground, read? Uh, verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. That's a key sign to who is behind this conspiracy. All the European nations use the eagle as their emblem, including America. But an eagle operate from where? An eagle operate from the sky and look down on its prey from afar. The prey have no idea that death is coming. You understand? So they exalt themselves from high. So the same way Esau was operating from the mountains on high, praying on the whole world, he would one day take over. That's how Satan or Lucifer is operating now. And through machinery, he, is, he has connected the whole earth to him. Hold up now. We're all seeing now on your dollar bill is looking on the outside of the earth, right? This is the information awareness office. That's linked directly to DARPA. That links directly to Digital Angel. Verichip. They will soon link all people to Lucifer. I'm going to go there in a moment. Read. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. And though thou, thou set thy nest among the stars. When you look at that word nest, you know what it translates to? Habitation. So that links directly to NASA's colonizing space. So what they're showing you on TV, some, some, a few guys floating. Who knows? These people they're showing you, it's probably not out in space. They're probably someplace in a studio somewhere just giving you images to make you believe that's what's going on. When you see images of what's going on out in space, there's nothing going on. Just some people floating around. You have to know that, you're, that trillions of dollars is going into something deeper and more sinister than what they're showing us on TV. When they do what? When, Set thy nest among the stars. When you begin to live out in space, when you set your nest among the stars, read. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Then I will send my son to take you out. That's when the stars, that's when the heaven shall be shaken and the stars of heaven shall fall to this earth as, as figs, untimely figs. The gods are ruling from the outside of this earth. The gods, they've, they've always done it. Since way back when, under the Greeks, the Romans, Satan have always operated in and out of this realm. Oh, this place we call earth. Read that again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Then will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So here's a, an impending battle. A battle between those that would follow the Most High in righteousness and those that would, would, will sell their souls and operate as initiates under Satan's world. And it's, it's no marvel because Lucifer looks to copy everything the Most High have promised us. Christ told the disciples, I go to prepare a place. It tells us in Revelations that we beheld Jerusalem come down into this earth. The cubits and all that, the Most High prepared a place for us. He says, in my father's house, there's many mansions. 
that there is habitation on the outside of this realm that Christ will bring to us. Well, Lucifer had promised his people the same thing. Because they know that the earth is on a schedule to be destroyed. So why would they give up their lives and all that without a promise beyond this realm? Satan have showed them this promise from the places they have been creating on the outside of this earth. Every other day, every other week, every other month, you see a spaceship going up or these called Apollo and all these different, different gods going up into space. They have built it. It has been built. I want to read this real quick and I want you to, I'm going to point out a few things. Mm -hmm. During the Cosmic Commons Evolutionary Strategies for Interstellar Colonization. And this is a Hartford paper that they claim that they're going to put together one, they need money to find out for economics and the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Right? Y'all can see this. I don't know if you can see this. That light is. Right? Something in particular I want you to read out of here. I can't read the whole thing. But they're making you believe that you, your money is being donated to them finding out whether or not there's... Uh, I, check this out. I want you to look. Speaking of colonists. Start here where it says colonists. Those that have enough money to get off the planet, right? Now, this is actually an actual paper. And of course, I got to go into this deeper tomorrow because I can't go through this whole thing, but I need you to read that. It says, uh, colonists are free to choose the types of oasis they land at, how long they stay there, the speed, hardness, and perception abilities of seeds, seeds. and how far those seeds fly before they attempt to colonize a new oasis. A new oasis. This is what they're selling to the rich. That you, you, why live in California? Why live in these places? It, it, earthquakes. You could develop your own oasis. Okay. <laughs> Hold up now. This is a Harvard paper. It's linked to NASA. The Bible says, when they sit their nest among the stars, this will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, the rich are now living in another thing. They're found. And they've found this even through insurance mortality charts is that there's a lot of people out there that get old when they get diseases they go to live they pay to leave this plane so that they can live longer because diseases what's killing them slows up in zero gravity so they live longer once they leave this realm why because this realm is on a clock of time and when you leave the earth time slows down they realize this so this is regular science here. So imagine these old fogies who have always lived evil, sinning, being as wicked as, wicked as they can be, knowing they're going to hell, a lot of them. They want to buy time. This is how they can do it. They're too selfish to leave their money to, to people whom they know is not going to be able to spend it anyway. This earth is almost done. So they say, I'm going to take all the rest of my money and I'm getting up out of here. They're leaving. Okay, finish reading what you have there. Assuming all colonies are risk neutral and have the same preferences in technology, we derive constraints on such equilibrium preferences and strategies. Since eventually most of the volume of the colonized universe should be far behind the colonization frontier, we are particularly interested in the preferences and behavior of colonists who have fallen far behind the frontier, perhaps left behind at an, oa at an oasis after its main seed exodus. After its main seed exodus. <laughs> so they're looking for an exit strategy out of the earth, brothers and sisters, in Harvard University and NASA, and they haven't told you that something is about to happen to this earth. All right. <laughs> so what's going on here? I didn't create this document. I, I, I actually downloaded this document from NASA. 
of was paper that was written in Harvard University. And I, let me read it out for those who want to download it themselves before they just cut the internet off altogether very soon. Burning the cosmic commons, burning the cosmic commons, evolutionary strategies for interstellar colonization by Robert Hansen, the Department of Economics, George Mason University, July 1st, 1998. Now it says George Mason University, but this, this document can actually be downloaded from the Harvard University. Okay, so there it is for those who can see it. And I'm saying this because I'm not making this up. Those that control our system right now are telling us that they are getting off the planet. Now, <laughs> let alone talking about fleeing Babylon. Okay, they they, they, on, they, on, they on another level here. They talking about getting off of the planet based on what they know is coming. But the Most High is going to strike them first. Now, there's more. Before they go down, what is to come of us? Right? What is to come of us? Because, hey, we're not going nowhere, right? <laughs> Let me go here real quick. I want, I, want to, I want to show this and how you can tie it all in together. Now, here's the problem we're dealing with today, brothers and sisters. The problem we have is that according to the Bible, there would come a time of awakening. Hosea, the sixth chapter, tells us that in two days he will revive us. So that's the time we're in now in which the whole earth is waking up, have become, an, uh, we're wide awake, awakened. And so now that we can see they have no recourse but to ramp up their plan against those who can see and find out the people who's willing to help them finish this order on earth. Hence, the mark of the beast. Now I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Revelations 13 real quick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? What is Just move that over there. Put that light. Yeah, move it that way. You move that just over this way. Yeah, that's good enough. That's good. Enough. Thank you. I appreciate it. Revelations 13. Because why? Listen, listen to this clearly, brothers and sisters. Uh, well, hold up. Before you go there, because mm -hmm. I wanted them to be able to see this. They have, because there's a mass awakening, people are realizing that they're being duped by an unseen hand. Mainly what you would call, they keep on saying Illuminati, Illuminati, but it's not Illuminati at all. It's just Masons who are operating in our system under Satan to bring forth this order. Not only to rule from earth, but to exterminate all that oppose, who, who opposes their God, Lucifer. And the last resort is to take out Israel altogether. But in order to do that, they must track and know where everyone is in the earth today. Now, I'm bringing this around full circle because I showed this earlier. How the plan under digital angel system architecture is to be able to, to mark all animals, people, as you can see here, using satellites, which are digital angels and GPS, and the systems on this earth. Also, connected to Verichip, I think I have it here, I've got so many papers here, let me move this out of the way. One moment. <laughs> Where's the Vera portal at? Hold on. Yeah, here it is. Also download a picture of what you would call Vera portals. It's linked to Vera chip. Now what is Vera portals? Vera portals is these two things you see here. And they can 
divide them in hundreds of miles radius all over the earth, as lines all over the earth. So that no matter where you are in the earth, if you go between one of these grids, no matter where they are, one on one side and one on the other, you can, they can find you from out in space and track you back to uh, what you would call a law enforcement official or military. So they got their portals. This, this, this have just been approved, what, two years ago. This right here called Vera portals that they will set up. So they will be your new grids to track everyone who will be chipped to link you directly to Lucifer. Now, as you can see here, I know a lot of you can see that y'all seen it before, right? Here's the plan to link you to what you would see, the Vera chip, and they got a sign, you know, same thing, all C and I, your Vera chip there, so that they can get you, get you tracked, right? See? Now, on top of that, I'm going to show you something here. I downloaded this. As a matter of fact, I printed this directly out, not downloaded it, from the, it's a seal, the, the, the Department of Health and Services from the Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> I'm going to show you how this all links in. This is from October 12, 2004. James Santelli, the Vice President, Finance and Chief Financial Office of Digital Angel Corporation. Now, this is actual documents that, that are made public for public reading. This is, not, no, this is nothing classified. Anyone can go get this information, right? And it, this is what they don't, they're not telling the people concerning this particular RFID chip that they will soon roll out. I'm going to show you how this all ties in. Lawman, I need you to read this letter to Mr. Santelli. Uh, Con. Now, Santelli is the finance and chief financial officer. He was that in 2004. I'm going to show you how this links in. Read there. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Santelli, the Center for Devices and Radiological Health the CDRH of the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, has completed its review of your petition for classification of the VeraChip Health Information Microtransponder System, a prescription device as per 21 CFR 801.109 that includes the VeraChip pocket reader and the VeraChip with the insertion device. The VeraChip pocket reader is indicated for use as a portable instrument that non-invasively reads the ID number of an implantable microchip that is inserted into the arm of the patient. When activated, the VeraChip pocket reader displays a unique identification number that may be used to access the patient's identity and authorized health information from a secure database. The VeraChip is indicated for use as a miniature and plantable microchip that is inserted into the subcutaneous tissue of the patient. That's inserted where? Into the subcutaneous tissue of the patient. Go ahead. Uh, the VeraChip provides the patient a unique identification number that may be used to access a database containing the patient's identity and health six, information. Six, six. Go ahead. Uh, FDA has determined that this device and substantially equivalent devices of this generic type should be classified as class 2. This order... Hold up! Class 2 is the same verbiage mm -hmm. that's in the Obamacare bill where it says that people with the bill must get a class 2 device, a two-way class 2 device injected in them or placed in them. They say it's a two-way radio device. They didn't tell no one out there that the Obama plan was the RFID chip. Finish reading. This order therefore classifies the Verichip health information 
microtransponder system and substantially equivalent devices of this generic type into class two under the generic name implantable radio frequency transponder system for patient identification and health information this order also identifies the special the special control applicable to this device entitled class 2 special controls guidance document implantable radio frequency transponder system for patient identification and health information read on it says uh, FDA identifies this generic type of devices as 21 CFR 8806300 and plantable radio frequency transponder system for patient identification and health information. An implantable radio frequency transponder system is intended to enable to access to secure patient identification and corresponding health information. Now, mind you, you notice it's saying patient, patient, patient. Mm -hmm. Why? See, the, see, they know everyone don't have a physical ailment, so what are they doing? They all are going into the mental health thing now, right? You notice all over the news you're hearing about mental health. So it's going to be about everyone needing this device based on their sickness, be it physical or mental sickness. Now, how does this all tie into the Masons and Satan out there? I'm going to show you in a moment. Go ahead. Uh, this system may include a passive implanted transponder inserter and scanner. The implanted transponder is used to store a unique electronic identification code, which is read by the scanner. Read by the scanner. And then we know that it's not just going to be the hand scanner. It's going to be the Vera portals all over the, their cities that can track you anywhere, not just out in, from space with the satellites. Because sometimes clouds get in the way of that. But now they're going to have these things lined up in certain areas and cities and all that to track you real time on Earth. Finish reading. It says um, the implanted transponder is used only to store a unique electronic identification code, which is read by the scanner. The identification code is used to access patient identity and corresponding health information stored in a database database. In accordance with Section 513F L F1 of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, devices that were not in commercial distribution prior to May 28, 1976, generally referred to as post-amendment devices, are classified automatically by statute and to Class Three without FDA or without any FDA rulemaking process. Now I need you to hold that. Mm -hmm. Right? I just I put this out there so that you can actually get this yourself from the Food and Drug Administration, how it was approved already. Didn't come through into the Obama bill. Now they say a patient, it used to be, well, you slip and fall, you're getting too old, maybe you maybe you have Alzheimer's, which we know is just a neurological damage that's given through some of the medication they're giving our our people and vaccines. But first it was through the physical, now it's through mental health. Right? Now check this out. Now, this is where it gets weird at. This is from Garnet News Service. The next step with your biochips, what will they do? Remember when I told you years ago, when I read out of Revelations, what will happen to anyone who decide to get this demon chip called the RFID chip? That it is prophesied that you will burn in hell according to the book of Revelations. Why? Because you no longer control your power. You no longer control your mind. What does this mean? This is information that you can actually find yourself, and I'm going to go into it tomorrow, uploading information directly into people's brains. I need you to read right here. Gone. This is Privacy, May 15, 2000. Read it. Uh, privacy advocates fear that as rapid advances are made in technology, the personal lives of Americans may be shadowed by a cloud no bigger than a computer chip. MicroStrategy founder Michael Saylor proposes uploading information direct to people's brains via computer chip. One proposal drawn from a recent science fiction film is close to reality. It's close to reality. 
Michael Saylor, the 35-year-old founder of MicroStrategy, who perhaps is most famous for watching his personal network stock, stock worth drop $6 billion in a single morning without whimpering, is involved with the concept. Saylor wants to beam information directly into your mind. He calls it telepathic intelligence. Saylor would do it by having a tiny transmitter surgically implanted in your skull or by screwing a computer chip into your wrist and having it transmitted into an embedded radio-like device near your ear bones. His computers already process a mammoth amount of data. Pertinent portions would be tailored to your life and interests. The transmitted, then transmitted to brain or air instantaneously, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Your stock is, tank, is tanking sell. You're on the wrong street turn. You're on the wrong street turn here. Your spouse wrecked the other car, called the insurance company. Your house is being burglarized, call the cops. The doctor called in your prescription, visit the pharmacy. I don't know who in their right mind would let somebody implant this in their heads, says Fordham University Law School professor Joel Reidenberg, an expert on information privacy. To the extent that we, be into, we begin to create a system of automatons responding to chip implants in people's brains, we will be destroying the foundation of a de democratic society. Now let's stop here because now we understand the technology have already been approved through regular science that they can actually send messages to someone's brains and control their thought patterns if they get this implanted in their head. This is actual, actual things that, that the patents are on the books for. Now, how does this link to the Bible? I'm, hold up, I'm not done, just one more. Track your position, right? September 4th, 2000, read that. Gone, this is, uh, it states, a revolutionary human implant which can track the position of a wearer or of the wearer and relay vital medical information via satellite will be unveiled this autumn. Will be unveiled this autumn through satellite, go ahead. Scientists hope the digital angel. The what? The digital angel. The digital angel. We know that the angels that fell before the flood the watchers who watched people like Lucifer and the all CNI is doing from the outside of the earth now. So when you see on these music videos, all these people with the triangle over their eye and all that, it's deeper than all oh, they sold out to the Illuminati. They're speaking of a system that has been implemented. They're actually communicating to the people that it has been accomplished. The hand sign is not to say they down with the Illuminati. The hand sign is saying, open your eyes and see that Lucifer's promise from the beginning has been accomplished. That's why the Luciferians are coming out without fear now. The earth have been so demoralized and the people have been so separated from reality that now Satanists can have their way. They're not afraid. They have come from behind the curtain. Now, the, now their job now is to finish off the conscious people, those that that refuse to be utilized, they, what they call the wasteless eaters. That's the next phase in this, to come after the enlightened, the true, true enlightened under Christ. That's the next phase. So what did, what, 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 what did I just read? That they have a way in which they can now control your minds if you get this chip, why? You notice how they're making everyone sick through vaccines and neurological damages through brains and all that. The answer to these problems of autism and all that going to be these chips injected into these children's brains so that they can catch up. But it's not going to be them. That's that's showing intelligence. They're making zombies so that demons and angels can control. Now, this is all scripture, brothers and sisters. They're making the people sick so that they're dependent on the technology that Lucifer have rolled out 
on society. Finish reading. It says, scientists hope the digital angel could save thousands of lives by sending er early warning signals to those with known medical conditions or help rescuers track victims of accidents or disasters. The implant is a miniature sensor the size of a five pence piece equipped with a tiny antenna which can be inserted under the skin. Using satellite and wireless technology, it can pinpoint the location of the wearer within 50 feet. Mm. Record the body's vital signs and pass the information onto a monitoring station. Chief Project Scientist Dr. Peter Zhu told the Daily Express, the name should say it all. Digital angels. Digital angels. Purpose to save life. So who's over all these corporations, brothers and sisters? Angels. Why well, do you think they named Lucent Technology? Lucent is Lucifer. All these corporations that are establishing this technology is for the One World Order agenda. The One World Order is to have all the people in Earth acknowledge and accept the God who have given them this freedom and this liberty or these cities. The power to rule in a man-made heaven like Babylon, which is really hell. There's more, Reed. As well as monitoring patients with medical conditions such as heart disease or diabetes. The device could be They don't care about, they create heart disease and diabetes, okay? They don't care about no one with, with heart disease and diabetes. That's the excuse they will use to implant people, Reed. The device could be used to track missing persons such as victims of mountain, mountaineering accidents, soldiers lost during missions, or missing and kidnapped children. The majority of people that are missing are people that they actually take to sacrifice or kill. So it's not about them trying to find some missing people when, when part of their rituals is sacrificing children to Moloch. Okay, they could care less about what they claim these things will work, will help to benefit society for. Read. Apply digital, apply digital systems. The Florida-based parent company also sees benefits for e-commerce, allowing firms to verify the identity of those using online services such as banking. The device will capture and transmit a person's vital body function data. So they're going to link all the finances to digital angel and the mark of the beast, which means eventually, no matter how much money one has, you will not be able to spend it unless you're on the grid and receive the mark. That's coming. I'm going to show you. Read. This device will capture and transmit a person's vital body function data, such as temperature, blood pressure, or blood sugar levels, to an internet integrated ground station. To an internet what? Integrated. Integrated. Ground station. Ground station. The device is powered through movement of muscles and can be activated, activated by the wearer or a monitoring facility. Dr. Zhu said, it would be a connection from yourself to the electronic world. It would be a connection between yourself to the electronic world. It will be your guardian and protector. It will be your what? Your guardian and protector. Guardian, an ancient god. And protector. And protector. Lucifer will be your guardian and your protector. See? It all links together from space, him being like God and knowing if you need help, knowing your thoughts, knowing what you're going through, following you around earth. He will be like God. That's the one world order. And you don't have to wait for this to happen or wait for some fictitious antichrist to pick up, to, 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 to come from nowhere. We're in it. <coughs> Let's go to Revelations 13. Uh, Revelations chapter 13. Before that, get Revelations uh, uh, 14, the one it shows what, what, what will happen to those who decide to receive the mark. Uh, Revelations chapter 14, verse mm -hmm. 9. Uh, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, 
If any man worship the beast if and it, if any man worship the beast and his image and his image and the Im and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand to show you that this is no fairy tale or conspiracy theory. These these things are on the books to be rolled out on society. Read the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of his holy of the holy angels. So those that receive this mark of the beast, which is a tracking device from Satan himself, who have set his nest among the stars and have become your physical God. If you link into him, you will receive the same judgment as him, according to scripture. Why? Because you no longer have power over your your temple you've given all your power to the devil satan to rule over you you can no longer control your vessel that's why they have these technologies that have been patented to where if you get them they can control you right now on a low level they're doing it with some of their medications to break us down but that's not working like they would like they want this thing in us permanently so that now we can be used as hosts and be controlled by demons. Let's go finish reading. Go to Revelation 13 now. Here's the key thing here. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had to do, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And we know who had a wound by the sword and did live was Rome. And, and now it, it has been healed as what we call modern day America or America. So all these things are being implemented, even though it's worldwide. A lot of this technology is coming straight from out of America. And this legislation is coming straight from America. Read. 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So those who decide they don't want to deal with Lucifer as their God, they don't want to follow the way the world is going. Well, according to scripture, you will be singled out for capital punishment. If you decide you don't want to deal with what's coming, you don't want to deal in a world that acknowledge Lucifer who have given us these cities and technology. Then there's no place for you because you can only do what? Become an enemy and fight against the status quo. And you are down with Christ, who is an enemy of this world. Who's the chief enemy of this world. So this is how they're going to identify those who are with Satan. And those who are with Christ. Read 16 and he causeth all both small and great doesn't matter how small or great you are whether you poor no doesn't matter read rich and poor doesn't matter who you are read free and bond whether you in jail or walking around read to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead now how can the bible be incorrect when this was prophesied this what i'm reading was written 2000 over 2000 years ago before there was any technology as the RFID, Verichip, or Digital Angel. The Bible is the only book that identifies exactly what's going on right now. Read. 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. It is a number of a man, which is six, six, six. And each man will have their number connected directly from the angels who have set their nest among the stars. Okay, so that's what's going on here. That's the true battle of Armageddon that will come starting out in space that will eventually lead to the destruction of all the Masonic cities that have been established in the earth under Satan. 
Now, tomorrow, do anyone have any questions? Good? All right. Huh? All right. Tomorrow, I'll be going into creation. And we're going to try to go a little bit more in depth on that void and darkness that was in the beginning in Genesis 1. We're going to also go into the evolution teaching and showing the theories of evolution and how they relate to what really happened to prove to you that you must follow the Bible's understanding on creation opposed to the evolutionist who still don't know what happened or understand how things were created. That's what we'll be dealing with tomorrow. All right. Now, before I go, I'm going to answer. I can only answer questions for five minutes. OK, because I went over my time. All right. Five real minutes. But before I go. Resolving a lot of what I was saying about the Masons and how they're operating in secret societies and, and, and doing things amongst our population. Keep in mind that right now over in Sydney, Australia, something is going on. A so-called hostage situation by ISIS, which is a total fake scenario with the same thing. You see the ambulances, people running around, nothing really happening, a drill that's happening the same way it happens all over the earth. And some people might ask, well, if these things are happening, how is it that no one is speaking out and all these people know about it are not saying anything? Well, what you don't realize is based on what I've recognized and I've seen also today in the video that you can go to my page and look at, that a lot of these Masons take secret initiations not to speak. And there's serious repercussions if they say certain things and, and break their Masonic oath. So a lot of these things that are going on is drills that, that happens amongst people who are in the Masonic society. They just dress up in some of these uniforms and do these, do these things. And everyone is, is a participant, including the news and all that. Then they roll it out to the population so that they can bring forth the order to push everyone into the order or the idea that was planned from the beginning to set up this earth under Lucifer and him being worshiped as gods and set up a structure to, to militarize the earth and kill off those who oppose their God. So each of these events lead to the same thing. More loss of rights, more, more military intervention. All this is part of a new world order because why? We're in a time of awakening and God's people, those who are, who are truly illuminated or enlightened, which are those under Christ, are spiritually fighting against the forces that are controlling this world, okay? They're looking to get rid of those who can see their plan, who they feel can get in the way of their plan. And how, the only way, there's nothing physically we can do, but what we, what we do is effective. We, we have others aware so that they can be pulled out of the Masonic matrix to prepare for the kingdom, to get prepared for the kingdom to come. That's, that's what they're afraid of. They want to drag as many people to hell with them as they can. Okay? So a lot of these people that are doing these drills, you're going to see more. More of these fake shootings, more of these fake events all over the earth and urgent, what you would call urgent, urgent and panicking uh, uh, news uh, anchors and news reporters reading from a teleprompter making you believe something is really happening. Okay, we are not to be caught up into all that, into into the in, into what they're trying to program us to believe. Okay, this is how they initiate us into their mess, into their confusion, so that they can bring order out of this chaos they create. All right, so that's what I wanted to say real quick on that because some people have asked me uh, what's going on with what's going on in Sydney. I'm going to tell you what's going on in Australia that, that's great, that should be publicized throughout all the earth. A brother that was just baptized in England from Australia, from the tribe of Naphtali, just went to the water last week and baptized like nine people in Australia. 
That's the real news in Australia. <laughs> we're pulling people out of it to prepare so that we're on the right side of justice when our Christ, when our Savior, Yeshua, returns. Okay? So there's nothing we can do to physically fight against them. But they oppose us. Why? Because they know that we're going to pull more people out and have more people become aware of what their plans are. You understand that they want to take as many of us with, as they can with them. All right. So we must make others aware and bring them to the truth of Christ. All right. Not not the December 25th Christ you about to deal with. Let me make a disclaimer here. With that, I can only answer questions for five minutes. I hope uh, we have tied in a lot of uh, loose ends for those, especially you new brothers and sisters who are coming in, to understand what's really going on with the Masonic connection between their God who's operating on the outer firmaments of, uh, of our plane. All right. Let me five minutes, folks. Hold on. All right. Let me see. Uh, all right. Uh, let me. Um, all right. Let's get. You, you see him there? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get the first one here. Um, someone says, uh, just understanding the book, uh, where are some good places you can go to when you, when you leave Babylon? I answer this uh, the same as I always do. When you look at Isaiah, the 11th chapter, it tells you all the places that will be safe, that will still be intact upon Christ's return. Well, I will, what I will say is, the best thing to do is to operate or speak to an elder or deacon that's operating with the church and they can give you the advice real time. And I'm going to say this because if I put something out there to say you should go here, you can go there and you not having no understanding of what's going on and make some choices and book tickets and go to certain places based on what you feel I advise, then I'm partly responsible for whatever happened with you. So I don't want to do that. I'm, I can't put, I don't, I, we don't really know people like that, you know, even though you may be a great person, whatever the case is. But I don't want to put something out there and you roll on that and then something happens. So I can't be responsible for that. So I'm not going to put out no places people can go and all that so that they can now have record that, okay, I said go here and this happened to that person. Everything must be done in decency and in order. If you are interested in having some plans of going certain places or, you know, traveling or whatever the case is, and you're looking at doing that with us, then the best thing to do in due time is get with an elder or deacon in your region and fellowship with them. And they'll give you the directions based on uh, what, what's being planned locally in those particular areas. That's my answer. And that's my future answer to that. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, this is M. Derry 445. How does Saturn connect to all of this? And have you seen the movie Interstellar? I haven't seen the movie Interstellar. I was told that I need to look at it. I'll probably see it a little later now that you're mentioning it. But Saturn is another name for Satan. Okay. And what we're looking into, and I think that there's some relevance to that, is that the Most High had to bring some order through some of the chaos that happened in the beginning. So, of course, there's not planets per se, but there's other parts of creation on the outside of our Earth that the fallen angels have, have, have been a part of. Now, Mars and Saturn could be not planets, but stars that were operated or gods. We know that Mars and Saturn are gods that have been worshipped in the ancients. So that could also represent uh, Satan being worshipped as a god from outside of, of, of the firmament, even in ancient times. He was called Mars. He was called Saturn. So we're still looking into that. Now, could there be some relevance to a place, a plane that they have as far as Mars or Saturn? Not like they're presenting, but to some degree, I believe it links. 
So I don't want to go into it fully until we have all the information scripturally to confirm that particular uh, uh, that, that particular point. All right. What's next? On the book of Adam and Eve, the angels of God, or call God the Father Jael, uh, has this name been inserted falsely in relation to John 3.16, the world? Can you explain 1 John 2 and 2? And is the propitiation, and he is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Well, keep in mind, like I said before, you must only stick with what the Most High gave Moses, because before then his name was not produced. All right. He was known just as the God of all, the God Almighty, before his name was presented. All right. So any name that you get prior to the one that was given to Moses is just what he was called. But his name in general is the name that he gave Moses. When he told Moses in Genesis, I mean, Exodus 3, you tell them when Moses asks, what is your name? And he says, tell them I am have sent me unto you. So when they ask my name, tell them I am have sent you. That's crystal clear. That's the most high saying himself what his name is. As long as you go through, go with that, there's, you know, you, you can't waver. All right. What, what was the second part of that? Uh, in relation to John 3.16, the world. Can you explain John, uh, can you explain 1 John 2 and 2? And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Well, you have to realize John 3.16 is speaking of, well, uh, let's go to John 3.16 real quick. John 3.16 is actually speaking of an age or a society. And don't forget Israel was scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. And not only will Christ cleanse the sins of, of uh, Israel, he's going to cleanse the sins of the whole earth because the second baptism is the baptism through fire when he come and destroy everything. So that's a cleansing of the world too. All right, so John 3.16 is not, God don't love this world, okay, at all. So when you read 1 John 2 and 2, you must also resolve it with 1 John 2 and 15. You can't stop at 1 John 2 and 2. Go to 1 John 2 and 15 real quick and read John 3.16. Now, and of course, I go to this, go through this, more in more in depth through the academy so if you want to actually get a be a part of this send an email to gathering as one the number one at aol.com and become a part of that uh first john 2 and 15. yeah read that love not the world love not the world neither the things that are in the world so the same first john 2 says love not the world neither the things that are in the world read for all that is in the world, or if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if we love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. So, of course, the Bible is not telling us that Christ loved this world. Okay? He's not speaking of this world. He's speaking of the world of Israel, his people. Read John 3.16. Uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What world did he love? Go to Matthew, go to, uh, go to John, John 13. St. John chapter 13, verse 1. Yeah. Now before the feast of the Passover. Before the feast of the Passover. When Yeshua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world. Having depart having to depart out of this world read unto the father having loved his own which, having loved his what his own which were in the world having loved his own which were in the world his own which were in the world so that's how you look at john three sixteen. you have to find out who his own in the world is read he loved them unto the end he loved them unto the end okay 
hold that and let's get uh, Isaiah 45 and 17, and that'll, that'll end that one. Just one more. Please. Go ahead. After, uh, after uh, Isaiah 45. Go ahead. Uh, Isaiah 45. And 17. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Read. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So Israel is a world in itself. The same way when you go to Asia or Chinatown, that's in China world. You go into Italy where the Romans are, that's the Italian world. So when it speaks of world, it's speaking of age or society. It's not speaking of everybody and everyone on this earth. It's not speaking of that. Israel is that world, all right? And that whosoever is out of Israel. What else do you have? Uh, this is St. John 11 and 49. Go ahead. Through uh, 52. <laughs> and one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. So one man should die for the people, so the whole nation perish if not. Read. And this spake he not of himself, but being the high priest that year, he prophesied that Yeshua should die for that nation. And for, not, for who? For that nation. For that nation, which is the nation of Israel. Read. And not for that nation only. And not for that nation only. But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that are scattered abroad. Crystal clear. That's why it means the whole world, because mm -hmm. Israel was scattered throughout the whole world. All right. The Apocalypse of Paul is a true, is true scripture. How did you like the Esau Lodge picture? Does that confirm the truth of masonry? I have to see it. I'm going to talk to you about it tomorrow. I want to see it. That, that, that was sent. I need to see that. The Esau Lodge. Okay. Good. Well, I, we're going to use that for who is Edom in the academy. I will, I will see that. I'm going to look for it. No soon as I'm off of this, I'm going to look for it. Uh, let's see. I did not get paid until Thursday, and I want to start the academy tomorrow. All right, just send an email. We'll straighten that out for you. Any academy questions? Gathering is one at AOL.com. We'll straighten that out for you. Don't worry about it. We'll get you in. I'm so confused about Satan's state of mind or whatever he uses to conduct his wickedness. If he believes and understands Bible prophecy enough to try and destroy us, why does he not believe Bible prophecy enough to know that he will be destroyed? Also, of course he knows that he's going to be destroyed. He's the great deceiver. Okay, he's going to be what he is. <laughs> he promised to get out there and he uses deception on mankind to get there. He know what his end is, but that, that, that's not going to stop him from lying to us. Uh, let's see. Also, my daughter wanted me to ask, what is the meaning of 666? There's many meanings to it. Six is the mark of a man. Also, when you look at this, the, the, the symbol of six is the star of Moloch that really links to a certain people who would be doing Satan's rule in the earth, who have the six-pointed star as their emblem. So these are the people who've made the oath over masonry, over government, to execute Satan's rule in the earth, the synagogue of Satan. So that six is the mark of, 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 of a man, giving us the, the identifier of the people who would be pushing Satan's agenda on this earth. That's, but it's more to it than that. But that's just on the base level. All right. All right. Uh, Okay, if you have any academy questions, please send an email. I got a few more. Uh, the Vera Chip, this is Judah uh, Ishrene. Shabbat Shalom, a great lesson. The Vera Chip sign looks just like a serpent eye. It does. Showing you, showing you know it comes 
from Satan. I was wondering if you both have read Satan's Mark Exto Exposed by Cell and Carbon. I think it's I think it's Saint Satan's Angels Exposed, right? It, it must be another book he wrote. Okay, I never wrote, I never read, I, I read the one Satan's Angels Exposed. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Ah, but he says there's another one. Yeah. Satan's Mark Exposed. I never read that, but I may get it. Who is the guy on the horse in Revelations with the sword? You're speaking of the horseman. I got that's an entirely different lesson in itself that we can't go into at this time, but I'll make it a note to go into that lesson on Revelations in the future. Uh Someone asks, why didn't they discuss where we are to flee? Okay, last but not least, there's many videos I've put out there on, on that. Okay, but keep in mind, like I'm saying again, that things must be done in decency and in order. And you have to understand the platform we're on. So the best thing to do is to link in with an elder or deacon in your region and link into the body. If there's elders and deacons still there, then you should feel, you know, you should you should have some comfort in knowing that, okay, there's some time to link in. So don't just go before those that are established there. Link in with the body first and operate with the church. You'll find out everything you need to know amongst the brethren. All right. And if you have a question on who you can link in with within your region, on your area, just send an email and we'll try to link you with someone who can, who can help you with fellowship first. And I'm saying this because every time we get these people who are out there and just booking tickets, it don't work out right for them. Some of them are linking in with some people in Jordan and all that. And the, and what, the information I'm getting back is, is horrible. So is best to deal with the people in the states and the elders and deacons we have there first okay with that i'm going to say shalom and we're about to pray out may the most high be with you